Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to some career mode goodness. Today we've got quite a few good games actually. We got Manchester City in the Premier League and that is actually a huge game for me. That is uh, they're essentially my competing rivals at the moment for that top spot in the Premier League. We also have Juventus in the Champions League. So those are two really big games. And then we got one last game against Stoke to finish up on. And uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about this Manchester City game. Manchester City have got a really strong squad at the moment. They've got one player in there, uh, Ella Badia or something like that. And I just have I have no idea who he is. I've never heard of him. Uh, I'm sure one or two of you guys may have heard of him, if assuming he isn't a regen player. But yeah, you know, this was going to be a really big game for me. That was an amazing save from Ter Stegen there. He is doing such a great job in goals at the moment. He made some cracking double saves, and that's something I really didn't see from him when I played uh, with QPR. You know, he, he seemed to let in a lot more goals, but he just seems so tight, and uh, what I'm enjoying most about him is the fact that he's just flying around the place. He's doing a great job of getting from one end of the goal to the other, making these cracking saves for the team there's no doubt that he saved me a fair few goals another good reaction save from him there but um, I believe right now, uh, myself and Manchester City are completely all tied up on points. So this was literally, whoever won this, got to go uh, take in the top spot in the Premier League. And that is a really important lead. We are coming up towards, you know, December, January, that uh, that sort of midway th uh, midway through the season. So this sort of time in the season is really crucial as to where you are in the league. And uh, having a three-point lead, although it's not big and it's very easy to throw th something like that away, it is still good to be ahead. So some really, really really good attacking moves made from the team. You know, they were playing really, really well. They were getting in good positions, making good runs. And as you can see, I believe Manchester City, I want to say they were playing a three at the back formation. I know um, Mancini has actually in real life tried to play a sort of three at the back formation and it wasn't working out too well for them um, at certain times. So um, yeah, they, I mean, I felt as though it was quite easy to break through their defense, but they also had such a, an amazing attacking um, ability that, you know, they could just go ahead and pick up goals like that. They had the likes of Aguero as well. Aguero is just insane in this game, so he was always an, a never-ending threat for me, and I had to put up with his shenanigans for a while. And yeah, you know, we went up, we were in a comfortable position of 3-1, but as you can see, Aguero scored to make it 3-2. And from then on, I was very much on the back foot, but Tristangan manages to actually save that, considering how many people were in front of him. I'm sure he didn't have that great vision, but we win that 3-2, and it doesn't really matter about the score too much. It's nice to get a one goal difference, but at the end of the day, we pick up the three points, and we take top spot in the Premier League, which is just magnificent for me. Really happy to see that go down, but more importantly, we had Juventus. Now, Juventus, I played them last time. Can't remember how well I did against them. I, I want to say that I did all right, but I know they are currently sitting third in the group. So this game was actually pretty big for me. And right early on in the third minute, Albona actually scores from a corner, which is really, really good start. I couldn't have asked for a better start. And we were playing some good football. They got some good passes off. One thing I do want to say, though, guys, that I noticed is the fact that Skirtle does, in fact, play for Juventus. So I was going up against Skirtle, if anyone that, for whatever reason, didn't know. He used to be a Liverpool player. I actually sold him and I got my money's worth for him because I already had some good center backs. I didn't really have any need for him. I felt as though Agger was uh, the better center back to go with. But they score a beasting, beasting uh, near post goal there from Dumbia. So I was really impressed with that. And uh, I can't really blame my keeper too much, mainly just because I know that um, in FIFA 13, near post goals are OP. But we respond very nicely through the form of Daniel Sturridge as he goes into halftime. 2 1 up. One from Sturridge, one from Ogbonna. If we can just keep up this great play, then we should be able to take three points in this group. So um, ba uh, Basil and Lille were also playing at the moment. So um, I was going to have to hope that one, you know, maybe a draw would probably be the best outcome in that, or maybe even uh, Lille to beat Basil. But besides that, you know, I think a draw would really suit me the best. Um, Jovetic, though, he didn't really get into this game too much. And I want to talk a little bit about, um, and I I'm going to say fitness, but I want to ask you guys this question. What do you guys consider low fitness? And when I say that, I don't necessarily mean, you know, obviously low fitness is when they can't run uh, as fast and all that. But I mean, like, when you uh, go in to check their fitness, to check how they're doing, you know, you got your little energy bar, if you will. And for me, low fitness is if you don't, if you're anything but in the green. So you obviously have the light green and then you have the dark green. Dark green being really, really good, got plenty of energy. Light green meaning, you know, he's got some energy in there, but you may want to substitute them sometime during the game. But for me, low, uh, low energy 
energy is when they're from the yellow and below so anything from that yellow middle warning below for me is low energy I believe that you can play a player when he has that sort of gr light green energy I think that's okay to play on you are running a tiny tiny risk that they could get injured obviously you always want to play um, th play them if they have that full green sort of dark green luscious green energy but besides that you know I think going into a game with um, the light green players is absolutely fine I wouldn't sweat it too much for example sterling right now that's okay um, you know I think that's that's all right but anything as you can see the, the oranges right now you want to sub them off but that sort of yellow you just you shouldn't be starting a player with that sort of fitness it's just a recipe for disaster um, I mean I risk it enough just with playing um, players that have that um, that light green one I think that's as low as you should be uh, you should start a player on their fitness so anyways enough of that rambling I just wanted to ask you guys that question see what you guys thought you know do, do you guys play those uh, players that have the yellow um, energy what do you what are your guys sort of rules on that but anyways we were three two up and in the 90th minute we get scored against what an absolute kick in the sack that is really disappointing to see but still you know a tie I really hope I am still top of the group uh, obviously that'll rely on what happened elsewhere and it turns out Basil actually beat Lille Basil are doing so well so I think Basil might actually be top of the group stage at the moment which is okay I definitely still have confidence that I'm going to be able to um, pull something back obviously now it's not all in my favor I'm gonna have to hope that Basil drops some points against Juventus I'm surprised Juventus aren't really kicking as much ass as I was expecting but still we had this game against Stoke now scope uh, scope what the fuck <laughs> Stoke aka the route one crew um, they decided they would give me a run for my money and of course it was in the rain so my players lacked several brain cells and everyone started to play derpy as their first touches seemed as if they were on some sort of drug I mean it's just unreal how bad first touches turn when it becomes when the when the range turned on when the taps are turned on But anyways Muriel is set loose He is a wild animal and he goes up against the keeper and of course he puts it into the back of the net That keeper was no match for Muriel that pace and that really nice run made it really hard for Stoke to try and defend that But overall, you know Stoke they were playing. Okay They managed to actually have a little bit of possession which was quite rare But that there is just really really poorly defended. That's a really poor goal to concede the attacker literally just walked in front and just literally slotted it into the back of the net so fair play to him for that but still I feel as that's a really poor goal of mine to concede but we went down the other end through the former Muriel and rocketed that into the back of the net to make it 2-1 and we were feeling good again as you can see Oxlade Chamberlain there not too happy on fitness needed to make some substitutions of course bring in on Barini someone actually said yo cow you need to play Barini more but Barini for me is that impact sub that I bring on in around the 70th minute because I feel as though he is good and obviously if any of my strikers are in that yellow bar of fitness I will chuck him on of course instead but uh, yeah I don't really have any uh, need to start a uh, Barini at the moment I did actually start Gerard though um, what uh, yeah, I did start Gerard and Gerard is just uh, he, he is good He's a solid solid player. Unfortunately, he is on his decline So I'm just trying to get the final the the last bit out of him uh, at Liverpool So I hope you guys have all enjoyed this episode And if you have then leaving a like is very much appreciated as you can see we're three points clear at the top of the table Hope you all have a cracking day and uh, expect an ultimate team video coming up very shortly And it's uh, it's a little bit of a wager match. I'll see you guys in a bit. Bye. Bye